Welcome to this quick video about Serda in Rust. This is going to be a quick tip video with an example to show you how to use it and how to apply it in your projects. So let's start with a simple example that's going to be able to show you the power and flexibility of Serda. So first of all, uh, what is it? It is a serialization and deserialization library that generates a format that uh, uh, generators can then use to output and serialize in a given format. For example, it can be JSON, YAML, or anything else. So let's start with an example. Let's say we have the concept of an employee. They have a name, they have an age, and maybe they have a phone number, number which is a string in this case, and that's our basic employee. To make them a little bit more interesting, we're going to try to create a nested object. So we're going to create a paycheck, and we're going to say an amount, and we're going to give it a tax rate, or tax percent. And each employee is going to have a, a number of paychecks, which will be a, a vector of paychecks. So now we have an employee and a paycheck. Let's create a vector of employees. So since I'm a cheater, I have already created this. So here we have three employees. Uh, one whose name is Bob Johnson. He's age 54 with some phone number. And he has currently two paychecks. Let's make that one instead. We have Sarah Johnson who also has two paychecks. Let's make give her three. And the last one could be 75601, with a pretty high tax rate. Finally, we have Molly Johnson, who has two paychecks. Let's collapse that. So now, what if we wanted this vector of employees to be able to be written to disk? So currently, we have this in memory in our program. If you want to save this and somehow resume our program with this state later, we have to serialize it somehow. So serialization basically means taking this data and writing it to disk so we can later read it back into our program and keep going where we left off. And the reverse process is called deserialization. Um, to be able to do this in Rust, we will use a library uh, known as Serde. So let's add Serde as a dependency. As you saw, I just popped up there. And to make it a little bit easier to use it as well, we will add another one called survey derive, which should be the same version. Now, this derive library allows us to simply create the necessary data by simply deriving from the uh, exposed uh, derive macro in this library. So let's use it. Let's use survey derive serialize and make our data structures serializable by going derive, serialize, derive, serialize. So since both of these are serializable, it's okay for us to put the paycheck inside of this inside of the employee. If this one was not serializable, then we could not put it in here. So string and integers and floats, they are by default serializable and are included in the base package of Serdy. So now that we have this, uh, we need to ex now we have the necessary uh, data and metadata. So, but we still don't have a format to export everything to. So what we can do then is we can go to the overview of the library. So if we go to serde.rs, we can then go from here and. Um, look at the net available formats. For example, we have JSON. That's pretty popular. So let's go look at that. Um, here we can see uh, the necessary import. So that's serde underscore JSON. So let's go ahead and use that. serde underscore JSON 1064. Now to create our JSON, we will simply create a JSON variable equals serde json to string. Let's use the pretty one so we get a pretty formatted string. 
and then we will pass the serializable value by reference. So please, and since we don't want to care about errors, let's just unwrap it right away. Um, here we have, so the value you pass here has to be serializable, and that means it has to derive from serialize or be another of the basic types that actually support this natively. Vector does this, and I think the map or the hash map does so as well. Uh, finally, we can just print this value and say, have a look at what it prints. So if we run the program, it now serializes our data as a perfect JSON array. So this can be used, for example, in a web server to produce a JSON response, or to just save the state of your program so you can keep going where you left off. So now we have Bob Johnson with one paycheck, Sarah with three, Molly with two, and all the data is, is saved nicely. Uh, if we want a different format, let's, for example, go ahead and go for YAML. Let's have a look at the library. It's linked here. Let's just grab this sort of live YAML. Put it in. Maybe there's a newer version. Yep, there is. Even though I think that would be pulled automatically since it's a patch version. So let's just get get our YAML equals survey YAML. It's pretty. Um, you can pretty much uh, drop and replace the namespace here. And let's pass employees there and unwrap as well. And let's print the YAML instead. If we run now we can see that we get our YAML representation instead. So we have Bob Johnson, age 54, and it looks a little bit different because that's a different file format. So that's very nice. Uh, we have now been able to serialize our data that we can use for a web server, a REST API, or we can just save it to keep track of the state of our program. And we did it in a pretty short amount of time, and it was pretty easy to do so. Uh, let's say we want to read this data back from the disk. We have saved it, or we just got it as a response from a web server. Right now, our data structures only support serialize, so we want them to be able to go the other way. So we have to dis derive from deserialize, and uh, not forget to use it as well. And then we can simply add it here as well. And not surprisingly, we just do this the other way. So we let um, Deserialized DS employees is a vector of employee, and we can simply go assert a JSON from string and pass in our JSON as string and unwrap. And then we can do the same with try to do the same with the YAML DSY, and this should be pretty much the same syntax here. And then if we also make this debugger printable, then we can simply print them out as a debug string. So we just go question mark, I think it's like this, could be the other way. And then we just pass in DS employee. Let's see what that gives us. Great, so now we have a vector in Rust, that holds the employee with Bob Johnson and his two paycheck, it's one paycheck, Sarah with her three, and Molly with the two as well. Um, and if we try the same with the, the YAML one, we get exactly the same results. Just make sure that you try to serialize the correct format. Oh, we actually did this with the JSON. Let's make sure we use the YAML instead. Surprising, it was actually able to read it in. All right, that's interesting. Anyway, we have now been able to deserialize our data as well, which really means from now we can start using this in the program. So if we wanted to, we could just iterate everything in this, our new vectors. So DS by employees dot iter. Um, let's see. Let's just for each. Let's forget about that. There we go. Um, 
like so. And then we can print it in here instead. If we wanted to. So let's run it. Oh no, I just print them on one line instead. So employee, employee, employee. I think we still print all of them, so let's get rid of that. Clear and run. And now I got each one on each line. So that's the basic use of survey. You pick, you take the main library, survey derive. You create the data types you need. Make sure to allow all of them to be serializable and deserializable. Uh, this only works if all of the types that you're included are also serializable or deserializable. Make also keep in mind that not all the formats you can export to support all the possible types. For example, some of these may not be suitable for arrays or maps. Uh, so you'll just figure out the limitations. Um, but JSON is generally very flexible and supports most of the data that you will be able to use yourself. Uh, if you're only going to deserialize, just derive from serialize so you save some space in your binary and you don't have to generate more code than needed. If same, likewise, if you're only going to deserialize. But Finally, you can use uh, you need to pick a format library that takes the data from survey and actually writes that in an understandable format. You can use JSON, YAML, or you can look at any of the other libraries on survey.rs. Uh, once you do that, then you can just use that library and use to string and from string to deserialize it back in if you derive from deserialize. And then you can use it back in your program. If you do that, uh, do remember to annotate your variable so it knows how what uh, type it should deserialize it into. Um, so that's the quick look at uh, Serta for today. And I hope that was a useful, small, quick video on how to use it and why it's good.